Hi, I'm Luke Nichols from the law firm of Nichols and & Green and I'm going to demonstrate how mouthwash can cause ridiculously high readings on a breathalyzer. Now, this device I have here is the Intoxalyzer CMI SD2. It's the primary uh, field breath testing device used by the Fairfax County Police Department. It's known as a preliminary breath test or PBT. And this here is uh, just your basic uh, Listerine mouthwash, the original formula. And uh, I'm going to show how that mouthwash will cause a very high reading on this breath test. Now, first off, I'm going to demonstrate how this works. And uh, so you can see right there that I'm sober. I have no alcohol in my system, nothing in my mouth. And this is a glass of Listerine. I'm not going to drink it. I'm just going to simply use it according to the instructions on the bottle. I'm going to rinse my mouth out. I'm going to spit it out and uh, we're going to run some tests. Okay, I've uh, used the mouthwash. I've gargled for 30 seconds just like it says to do on the bottle. Now I'm going to take a breath test. And it's stabilizing around 0.73 and a half, 0 0.7, 0 0.730. So 0.730, that's approximately nine times the legal limit. If a person who actually had a blood alcohol content of 0.732 um, came into the police station and produced that result, you would get them to the hospital immediately. That would kill a normal human being. And as you can see, I'm neither dead nor intoxicated. This breath result is merely caused by mouth alcohol, the alcohol fumes from my mouth. I've consumed none of the alcohol in the Listerine. This is simply alcohol that's trapped in my saliva. So what we're going to do is show you how long these results can last. I've started a timer and we're going to take some tests after we've had a little time for the alcohol in my mouth to dissipate. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm not going to drink anything. We're just going to see what happens under normal breathing and talking. All right, it's been five minutes and uh, we're going to try to do a, another test and see how much uh, alcohol I'm reading at five minutes after using Listerine. So right at 0 0.077, just a hair's breadth away from the legal limit. So five minutes after I gargled with Listerine, I'm uh, still blowing darn close to the legal limit. And remember in Virginia, you can still get a DUI if you're under 0.08. Okay, here we are at 10 minutes and we're going to take another breath test. 0.025. So you can see here, we're in the mid 0.02 to 0.03 range. So this is enough to fail an ignition interlock test. So if you have ignition interlock installed in your car and you've used mouthwash within 10 minutes or more, you could easily blow uh, a failed ignition interlock test which could cause a probation violation and shut your car down. So this is a big deal. Oh, that's quite a bit of alcohol there. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes since I uh, gargled with the uh, Listerine. And so now we're going to try another test and see where my uh, breath alcohol levels are at at 15 minutes. And you can see it's just barely registering right now. 0.004. Okay, we're here at 20 minutes and we're going to do our final test. Oh, 0.003. Just barely anything left at 20 minutes. 
So if you had alcohol in your system in addition to uh, using mouthwash, that might barely push you over the limit. But by itself, it's a very small amount. Well, at any rate, we hope this has uh, answered some of your questions about the effects of uh, alcohol-based mouthwash on breathalyzer tests. Thanks for watching. And once again, if you ever have any questions about your DUI case or DUI law in general, contact the law firm of Nichols and Green for a free consultation. Thanks for watching.